In this video, we're going to discuss nested quantifiers and how to negate them. In an upcoming video, we are going to discuss how to take a statement like every real number has an additive inverse and be able to write it using quantifiers like I have here for all x there exists a y such that x plus y equals zero. For now, however, I just want to discuss when is this true or is this true or how do I know what is the process involved? So we can see here that we have a domain of all real numbers, every real number. So in this domain, because it's all real numbers, in order to show that this is true, we would have to use reasoning and proof because we can't go through an exhaustive list of all the real numbers because the real numbers are infinite. So we will talk so much more about reasoning and proof in the upcoming three, several lessons, more than three, I guess. And however, let's say I said that X was the set of numbers 0, 1, and 2. Now this is a completely different scenario because what I have is I have a list of values and what I can do instead is, again, we're still going to assume Y is just any real number. So now what I'm saying for all X in my set of numbers, there exists some Y that is a real number such that X plus Y equals zero. Or I'm saying zero plus blank equals zero zero plus, sorry, one plus blank equals zero and two plus blank equals zero. And if I can find a value to replace, to make that statement true, and those values all belong to the real numbers, which they do, then essentially I have proven it's true. So I've cycled through each of these numbers and shown that it is true. So let's take a look at this example. We're going to let P of XY denote that X times Y equals Y times X. We'll assume that the domain is real numbers. So I have two different statements here. And before we talk about whether they are true, I want to talk about what I notice about them. And that is here I have for all X and for all Y. Here I have for all Y and for all X. So essentially what I'm asking is, first of all, is this statement true? And then I'm saying, is it still true if I change the order of X and Y? So what exactly does our statement mean? This first statement says, for all real numbers X and for all real numbers Y, x, y, or x times y equals y times x. So is this a true statement? Well, yes, in fact, this is true. How do I know it's true? This is essentially the commutative property of multiplication. I'm saying that the order doesn't matter. I'm going to end up at the same product. So I've shown that the first one is true not through a formal proof. But number two says is for all y and for all x. So essentially it means this exact same thing. But now I'm saying for all real numbers y and for all real numbers x, is that statement still true? And yes, in fact, it is. Because as we had said before, the order doesn't matter. So in this one, both of these statements are true. It didn't matter if X came first or Y came first. Now let's take a look at a different example. It says let Q X Y denote X plus Y equals five. Again, the domain is all real numbers. So let's start with our first statement. And our first statement says, is it true that for all real numbers X, there exists 
a real number y such that x plus y equals 5. So the question is, is this a true statement? So it's really important here to understand the for all and there exists. So this is saying for every single real number, does there exist some other number such that when we add them together, we end up with 5? And of course, this statement is going to be true. Because for all real numbers, for instance, 2. What number could I add to 2 to get 5? 3. So what about 1 half? 1 half plus what equals 5? Again, we're dealing with any of the real numbers. So 1 half plus 4 and a half or 9 halves would equal 5. So that is always going to be true. Now my second statement is a little bit different. Is there exists a y, so there exists a real number y such that for all real numbers x, x plus y equals 5. So some might say, well, that is the exact same thing that we just did in number one. And that is unfortunately not the case here. We're saying there exists some real number such that for all real numbers x, x plus y equals five. So we're saying, is there one number y, just one number, it can't change based on each case, such that for all real numbers x, x plus y equals 5. So let's let y equal 0. Well, if x is 1, then I have 1 plus 0 equals 5, and that is not true. So the only time that would work is if y is 4. OK, so for the sake of argument, let's let y equal 4. Well, then let's say x equals 2. Well, then I get 2 plus 0 doesn't equal 5. 2 plus 4 doesn't equal 5. So we can see that the second statement is false. Here is another practice for us to do together, and then the next one I'm going to have you try on your own first. But for this one, we're saying let u, that is the domain, the universe, be the real numbers, and p of x denote x times y equals 0. And we want to find the truth values for each of the following, which is of course using the for alls and there exists for each of the different combinations that we might come up with. So let's take a look. The first one's saying for all x's and all y's that are real numbers, x times y equals zero. This of course is false because this one's saying I can choose any random x and I can choose any random y and when I multiply them, I will get zero and that is not the case. What about the next one? For all x's, there exists some y such that this is true. So for all x's, for any x that I choose, 3 or 7 or 4 or 29 or negative 32 or, you know, 1 half, whatever, any real number, is there just one y that I could multiply by anything that I plug in for x and end up with 0? Why, yes, there is. That is 0. So if y equals 0 shows that, yes, there does in fact exist a y value, which is 0, that I can use for any x value to make that true. So this is true. My next one, there exists some x such that for all y, x times y equals 0. So very similar to the one we just did that says, there exists some x such that any old y that I choose to put in here, I end up with 0 because x is 0. So it's very similar to the other one. Yes, this is in fact true because if x is equal to 0, then it doesn't matter what y is, that product will be 0. And for the last one, there exists some real number x 
and there exists some real number y such that x times y equals 0. This one is also true. We all know that we have to have one of these two be 0. So there exists some x, say 4, and there exists some y, 0, where that statement is true. So I've just shown it. 4 times 0 equals 0, and that works just fine. For this one, I would like for you to try these questions yourself first. So go ahead and press pause. Try all four questions and then press play to see how you did. So for this question, again, we're dealing with the universe of real numbers and we're letting P of X denote X divided by Y equals one and we're trying to find the truth values. My first statement says for all X's and for all Y's, X divided by Y equals one. Hopefully this one was pretty straightforward that this is false because that's saying I can choose any X and any Y and I'm going to end up with one and I've shown in fact that that is not true. For the second one I'm saying for all X's, so for any X that I want to choose, there exists some Y so I can plug a number in right here such that this is always true. And obviously that is not the case either because remember X is going to be changing. So there would only be one Y that would work for every X. So again, this is false. My third one, there exists some X such that for all Y, again, I'm dealing with any Y that I wanna put up here is there one value that I can plug in for X such that I always get one? Well, obviously not because this number is going to keep changing. So this could be a two or a seven or whatever. And the only way for this to work is for this number to also change to a two or a seven. And that is not the case. So this is a false. And the last one, there exists an X and exists a Y obviously in the real numbers, such that X divided by Y equals one. And all I have to do is show an example that that is true because it's an exists question. So let's let X equal four and let's let Y equal four. And all of a sudden I have a true statement and all I have to do is show, oops, not false, but true. All I have to do is show that there is one such set of numbers X and Y that exists. And for our last question together in this video, let P X Y denote that X is equal to negative Y. And we want to find the negation of this statement. So this is the first time we're doing a negation of a quantified statement. When we negate a quantified statement, essentially what we're trying to do is we want no negation to precede a quantifier. So what I'm being asked to do is I'm being asked to find the negation of for all X there exists a Y such that PXY. And what I need to do is think about how am I going to, I'm going to make this one a different color, how am I going to negate this? So we talked about negating quantifiers in a, um, a few videos ago. And what we're going to do is essentially, we're going to just start by taking the negation, that was a bad one, the negation of for all X, which of course the negation of for all X gives me there exists an X such that the negation of the rest of this and I'm still not there because I still have a negation in front of a quantifier. So now I'm going to keep going. I've got there exists an X and now I'm negating this. So I'm saying for all Y and then negating what's left which is 
P X Y and for this one we are in fact done and of course we always want to think about what does our solution mean so now we're saying the negation of for all X there exists some Y such that X equals negative Y we're saying there exists a real number X such that for all real numbers for all real numbers Y X equals or X does not equal negative Y If you found this video helpful, please like and share, and you can certainly stay tuned to talk about how to translate, sta translate statements using quantifiers.